This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. That is a disgrace. You know, some whack job can say this stuff and get away with it. Parts of Britain were set to be lashed by very intense thunderstorms today as the UK's week of tumultuous weather continues. A 12-hour yellow weather warning for stormy weather. Warning, warning. As um, lasts until now. So if you haven't had it yet, you're probably not going to. A 12-hour yellow weather warning for stormy weather was issued by the Met Office and uh, remains in place until now. Up to two inches of rain could fall in as little as uh, two to three hours, with local flooding and spray on the roads possible. Forecasters have warned of hail, thunder, very, very frightening. Hail, thunder, lightning, very, very frightening. (laughs) I knew there was something wrong with that. The outlook improves for the weekend, uh, by the way. Um, The the thunder and the lightning and the heat could uh, lead to possible train and bus uh, cancellations and also power cuts. Uh, because apparently we are not resilient to any kind of weather that's not mild and partly cloudy. Anything else makes this nation fall flat in its face. Come the weekend, though, much nicer. Temperatures expected to rise uh, beyond 75 Fahrenheit in the south on Saturday, and you double it and add 32 to get from Her Majesty's patriotic Fahrenheit to European surrender centigrade. So, uh, let's see, double 75 is 160, and 160 plus 32 is 182. <gasps> It's going to be 182 degrees centigrade this weekend. Can you believe that? No. More heavy rain is expected to fall in Northern Ireland before spreading to Western Scotland. Well, yeah, I bet it is. Checking while you wait. One moment, please. There it is. Oh, blimey. <laughs> well, it's rain- this is in Glasgow. Raining tonight and raining tomorrow and raining on Sunday and raining on Monday. And then cloudy on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. And then raining on Saturday. And um, dry next week. (gasps) Dry. Rubbish. More heavy rain is expected to fall in Northern Ireland before spreading to Western Scotland. And on Sunday, an area of high pressure is then expected to bring more warm and sunny weather across parts of East Angular and the South East, with temperatures possibly reaching 86 degrees. Wow. It continues an extraordinary week of weather which saw the UK record a new all-time high of 104.5. Even I said it was hot. For a bit. Just for a bit on, um, when was it? The uh, Tuesday? For a few hours there in the afternoon when the, when the breeze dropped. It was like, oh, OK, I'm going in. Temperatures led to wildfires and blazes in the east of London that destroyed 41 homes during a never-before-seen red alert warning for extreme weather, which saw gardens catch fire, fields alight, homes burned to the ground. The fire brigade experienced its busiest day since the Second World War, but in happier news, Bodger Johnson was enjoying himself taking a flight in a fast jet fighter at our expense, having his picture taken in a flight suit that they adjusted so that he could squeeze into it. They had to take most of the instruments out of the plane just to cram him in. What's he like? He's seen Top Gun and he thinks he's Tom Cruise. Painful. Met Office forecaster Alex said, Much of southern England, the Midlands and uh, eastern England will stay dry and fine through Saturday. It may turn a little breezy in places, but turning warmer here as well. In the sunshine, temperatures back into the mild, possibly even high 20s whereas it's cooler with a cloudier, winder, wetter weather, windier, wetter weather further west. Wow, he actually said that out loud. He said, it's cooler with the cloudier, windier, wetter weather further west. (laughs) What do you want to say that for? Making me say it. Okay, Saturday. Occasional rain affecting northern and western areas, possibly heavy and accompanied by brisk southwesterly winds, some brighter spells too. Bright in southern and eastern areas, feeling very warm. And the outlook from uh, Sunday to Tuesday? Rain or showers on Sunday, heaviest in the north and the west, of course. Mostly dry southeast. Fewer showers on Monday, largely fine and dry on Tuesday. Windy at times. Would you like to hear the long-range forecast for the next four weeks? No! So, last week of July, first week of August. At first, dry weather for many with clear and sunny spells. Breezy in the northwest. Temperatures mostly near normal. Mostly 
There's the potential for a warm or hot spell in the south towards the end of the first week in August. Drier weather may extend from the south to cover much of the UK. And then, it's slipping through our fingers this summer. Time never stops. Here's the forecast for the middle two weeks of August. Good luck, everyone, because uh, it doesn't look like you'll be able to get through customs to go anywhere else. It's staycations all round. So Saturday the 6th of August to Saturday the 20th. An increased risk of some rain in the south, more rain in the north. Temperatures most likely to be around normal or slightly above, but the potential for a hot spell in the south remains. <gasps> Temperatures most likely to remain normal or slightly above, but the potential for a hot spell in the south remains. We'll take it. Adrian emails, so we had a nice bit of weather. Oddly enough, I didn't explode into flames like the press would have you believe. Uh, um, and I'm not ginger, so I didn't get a free cinema ticket. What does that mean? Why do you get a free cinema ticket if you're ginger? Well, because they let you in, didn't they? Out of sorrow. No, they don't. Do they? <laughs> that is borderline the most racist thing I've ever heard. Mikey emails, please tell listeners not to worry. Botcher's found a new job as a marketing manager for Peppa Pig World, so all is okay. Peppa Pig World, Bodge. Peppa Pig World. Peppa Pig World is... Uh, is it, it has... Uh, yes. uh, mm -hmm. Peppa Pig... Is the right answer. <phone rings> Very good. Oh, I don't know where to start. It's also painful, isn't it? How about Fishy Sunak? Fishy is under uh, pressure to outline plans for swift tax cuts after fall falling further behind Liz in the race to become the next Tory leader and Prime Minister. Wow. I am stunned. Just when you think it couldn't possibly get any worse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. It does. <laughs> it's a competition between the two to see how little either of them know or care about finance and how, how right-wing UKIP adjacent they can get. I think that Rishi's got this one on uh, finance, uh, but uh, Liz has the kipper tendency. We've got a few idiots in our party. The former Chancellor is so far resisting mimicking Ms Truss's plans for huge cuts to taxes. Experts said the Foreign Secretary's fiscal plans for after entering number 10 would cost the Treasury £30 billion, but she's insisted that they will not impact on public spending. <laughs> Funny, no? No. Not really because it's happening to us. Yeah, we can uh, cut tax by tens of billions of pounds, but it won't affect the amount that we uh, spend on, you know, keeping the public uh, uh, healthy and wealthy and wise. Yeah, it, n none of this matters about what's good for the, uh, for the nation, though. I mean, we're dealing with two maniacs here who are solely concerned with winning a rigged election to be the leader of this country that 99.7% of the people in this country don't get a say in. Sunak did not pull any punches in an interview last night. Speaking to this station, he warned that the shortfall would have to come from inflationary increased borrowing. Yeah. <laughs> and people in the uh, Tory, party, Tory party membership uh, heard that and thought... Boring! Yeah. What, what can you tell me about immigrants? The shortfall would have to come from inflationary increased borrowing, he said. He said he was going to that going. He said that going on a huge borrowing spree would only make the situation worse. And he's an expert in making the situation worse. He's the expert who didn't hedge for inflation on the national debt, costing us. Is it 11 billion pounds or 12 billion pounds? Something like that. Some staggering figure that's just so big. I don't even know how to write it down in numbers. Apparently, it's worse than what Gordon Brown uh, cost us when he sold off all our gold. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Gordon. And despite the fact that having Liz Truss as our next premier would achieve the virtually impossible and make us an even bigger laughing stock on the world stage, she's actually in the lead among the golf club boars that actually have a say in the matter. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> This country's lost its mind. I am stunned. Liz Truss is in the lead to be our next Prime Minister. <coughs> what could possibly go wrong? Chris Tex, please tell us your preference for PM. Not for the sake of the country, but for the sake of the show. <laughs> That's a good question there, Chris. 
I mean, we, we did have a, a world leader who was no good for the world, but he was great for this show. Oh, shut up! I mean, I've got a whole page of this stuff. I am the most fabulous whiner. I, I, and I'm a whiner, and I keep whining, whining and, and whining. whining. Yeah, I know. I'm a whiner, and I keep whining, whining and, and whining. whining. But let's um, not talk about uh, Trump for the moment. Let's talk about baby Trump. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I mean, really, uh, it just blows my mind. I don't think I can pay. I, I don't think I can pay attention to this anymore. I mean, it's just too. It's too much. I'm, I'm up to my eyeballs with this. I'm. I don't believe I've ever been so outraged and um, deflated at the same time. Tell us your preference for PM, not for the sake of the country, but for the sake of the show. Politicians with material. Also, what do you think of Budgie, the rock band? <laughs> not the bird. <laughs> not the bird. <laughs> I thought they were okay for a pub rock act. Budgie. Don't really know very much about them. Um, yeah. Politicians with material. Well, well there's, um, I've got a couple of Liz Truss. That is a disgrace. Yeah, there's that one. And also... We have never had it so good. And I spent about half an hour today trying to get um, Frank Spencer going, oh, <laughs> which I was going to use for um, Rishi Sunak, because he is Frank Spencer up and down, that bloke. But I couldn't pick a clip that didn't have audience laughter all over it. Oh, blimey, audiences. You, you mic them up, and it's almost like they're competing with each other to see how loud they can laugh. Oh, and then his knickers came down. Ooh, 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 ooh. <sighs> Sutex, I didn't like the very hot weather, but not quite as bad as down here in Swanage. I didn't like the very hot weather, but not quite as bad down here in Swanage. Does that make sense? I'll carry on and see if the rest of it does. She says, I was horrified to see the destruction caused by the fires of at least uh, 41 houses destroyed across London. Why don't we ban portable barbecues and bonfires for the rest of the summer while the ground is tinder dry? Even the steam, steam railway here is still operating and line side fires can happen so quickly, especially when it's windy. Love you, says Sue. Appreciate it, Sue. Thank you. I, I like you right back. 0345 Text 84850. Email nickA at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. So we think we're going to get um, either Fishy or uh, the Brains Truss. <laughs> but it might not work out that way because there's a late entrant into this race. Have you heard? <gasps> I'll come to that in a minute. 0345 6060 973, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10, Nick Abbott, LBC. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. Well, the whole world's gone crazy. Yes, the whole world has in fact gone crazy. Well, this particular part of it has gone absolutely loop the loop. Dumfries, hello, Ian. How you doing? You alright? Yeah, good, thanks. Uh, I basically, I can't believe how much media coverage we've had about who's going to be the next leader of the Conservative Party. Too much? Um, you know what I mean? Uh, far too much. It's irrelevant. But this is what the Tories <laughs> seem to do. They seem to... Uh, irrelevant? Reflect from the, I think it's pretty irrelevant to us because who does it, it doesn't really matter. We should call for a general election anyway. Mm. And they seem... They, there's more pressing matters. You know, like the price of gas, electricity, food... And all the rest of it. These are far more important things. And, yeah, uh, but but uh, all of social, these social, all of, social housing. Yeah, you know I, what I, mean? I understand all that. But all of these things are things uh, are issues that a new PM could address and do something about. I know, but the thing is, it doesn't matter what they actually say anyway before they get elected because they're just going right. to change their mind anyway. You know what I mean? They just say yeah. what they have to say to get elected. That's what they do all the time. All politicians do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Throughout the years, you can't trust any of them. You know what I mean? Personally, right. that's what I think. OK, thank, thanks, Ian. It's irrelevant who's going to be the next leader of this country. It's not going to be anybody that we want. Or certainly not going to be anybody that we get to vote for. Tory sources suggested that Fishy Sunak would have to offer members something after a new poll fans that Truss had increased her lead among the Conservative Party faithful. I am stunned. <laughs> 
And I looked up the, um, the demographic of the people that are going to be choosing our next leader. 76% will leave voters. 76% of the people that are going to choose our next to PM voted leave. And, you know, in agreement with this bloke. I'm a nutcase. 63% are men. Almost 40% are over 65 over half live in London and the South East, and 95% of them are white British. So they represent us not at all. But they're going to uh, they're going to be the deciders anyway. Absolutely. They are the deciders. Chris says, uh, what would uh, Trump do? He'd make a bid to return. Interesting, uh, says uh, Chris. Yeah, that is exactly what he'd do. Hello, everyone. Yeah, uh, he's, he's barely said... Bye-bye. ...before he says... Hello, everyone. Yeah, I'm back. Tory sources suggest that Fishy soon are going to have to offer members something. What, like what? <laughs> Sterodent. The Foreign Secretary was the choice of 62% of the membership. You remember who the Foreign Secretary is, don't you? Yeah, that's Liz Truss. <laughs> Hard to believe, I know. I've tried to wipe that piece of information from my mind, but it just won't go. The foreign secretary of this country is the choice of 62% of the membership polled by YouGov for Sky News against 38% for Fishy, the ex-chancellor. I mean, seriously, these people shouldn't be allowed out. Are you kidding me? And they definitely, totally and absolutely should not be given the option of choosing our next leader. I mean, Rish is, well done, you guys, we smashed it. Cringe fest and his inability to work a credit card and that phony, phony uh, photo op when he filled up a poor person's car should count him out of the race. But the thing that should count out Liz Truss is everything. Everything. And they're going to tour the UK over the next six weeks. You know, like the Rolling Stones. Worst tour ever. And they're going to take part in 12 hustings for the Tory members who are going to vote for their next leader. With the result being announced on September the 5th to a devastated public. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, a former advisor told Politico, Fishy needs to throw something to the right and the finance bods who think Liz is right. OK, no finance bods think Liz is right. Zero in number. And, and besides that, this national insurance rise that she says she's going to cut, that was to prop up the NHS, remember? after they admitted, without saying it out loud, of course, that that 350 million quid, if we left the EU, that was on the side of that bus, that we could spend on the NHS, was just another lie. Just another one of those. Liar! Exactly. So she's going to cut the thing that's, uh, that's um, being brought in to fund the health and social care services while saying that she's not going to cut health and social care. That makes sense, no? No. No. It's just fantasy stuff. They're just making it up. Let's see how unhinged I can be. I mean, it's just how are they going to fund the health and social care services? Just as they have done over the last 12 years, I expect. Badly. Running it into the ground so that anyone that's saved enough goes private because there's no choice other than to live in pain and misery. So we'll be having more of that. Liz is number one with the Tory party members. Can we get some of the other ones back? <laughs> I mean, at least one of them's got to be better than that. A poll found that Sunak is more likely to win a general election. So the people, the little people, not leprechauns, they prefer him. Probably because he seems less unhinged. He seems relatively normal-ish for a bloke who looks like he buys his suits in the school uniform section of CNA. Is CNA still a thing? I don't know. It should be. 
a poll found that Sunak is more likely to win a general election uh, because, um, you know, let's not forget what the priority is here. The priority is winning the next election and the next one and the one after that forever. It will always be the number one goal. All other considerations are secondary. And figures this week showed government borrowing in June as the second highest level ever, as in of all time. The interest on the debt, <laughs> we got £2.4 trillion pounds of, of debt. I, I've got no idea what that is. Trillion. How many zeros is it? All of them. The UK racked up £22.9 billion pounds of borrowing in June alone. Driven mainly by £19.4 billion pounds to just service the debt. That's the interest. £19.4 billion. That was more than double the same month of last year and a peak since records began in 1997. It's just under half the amount that we spend on defence every year. Large portions of the government debt, debt stocks are linked to RPI inflation, which has been soaring even higher than the headline CPI rate. This is, this is like Fish's stupid error, his schoolboy error in his schoolboy suit. The financial plans for the final candidates for Prime Minister were growing more divided as they battled for the votes of the Tory membership required to win the race for number 10, it says in the Super Sore Away Mail. Robert Joyce, the Deputy Director of the Institute for Financial Studies think tank, put uh, Liz Trust tax cuts at more than £30 billion a year and possibly considerably more. He said the plans mean higher borrowing or less public spending or some combination. <laughs> although, <laughs> although he said the impact remains unclear because Liz Truss's proposals are, quotes, yet to be fleshed out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in other words, it's just something she, she just dreamt up and just pulled it out of the air. Liz Truss insists that she's not planning public spending reductions, despite pledging vast tax cuts. So where's the money going to come from? Doesn't matter, like that bloke from Scotland said. Who cares what they say now? They don't mean any of it. Liz Truss told reporters in Peterborough, what I am planning is public service reforms to get more money to the front line to cut out a lot of the bureaucracy that people face. Right. How many, how many times have you heard somebody say that? And one... Um, yeah, uh, two more. Um, six million. Six million. I've heard it about six million times. Somebody said that. Oh, we're not going to uh, cut a a single thing. Don't you worry about that. We're just going to um, enact efficiencies. Sunak told this station that he wants to restore trust in government as a prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good one, Fishy. Best of luck with that. 0345-6060-973. And as for that um, text, please tell us your preference for PM, not for the sake of the country, but for the sake of the show. Well, I guess it's got to be Liz Truss. That is a disgrace. I mean, comedy gold. But do we actually want another comedian? Chris Tex. Um... Oh, yeah, what would Trump do? Make a bid to return. Yeah, that's right. Well, hot news coming up. You know who might uh, not actually be leaving at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 There's where? a move afoot. I'll get to that in a minute. 0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Friday, Saturday, Sunday night at 10. Nick Abbott, LBC. It's 10.30. The news headlines with Tim Humphrey. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. You've got a good, um, you know, your your mind is a little bit, you know what I mean, three-dimensional. No, I do not know what you mean. Uh, East Yorkshire, Mike. Hi, Nick. Oh, uh, that was quick, Mike. Um, how are you? I am great, mate. Good, good. Yeah, um, little thing to point out, and that's that um, the definition of a trust or one of them, is a medical appliance designed to hold in a hernia. Hmm. And Christ, the Conservative Party are herniating at the minute. 
Well, that was a very long way around. <laughs> For that, <laughs> but, no, Mike. But, but the, yeah. um, what worries me there, Nick, at the minute, I mean, you keep talking about circular firing squads, mm. and what worries me is that at the end of this um, Punch and Judy show that we're going to get yeah. is the Conservative Party conference where even the half that hate her, if she wins, mm-hmm. will rally behind her, they'll all be uniform, yep. it'll all be backslapping and everything else, and then we'll have a Labour Party conference where momentum attacks the parliamentary party mm-hmm. and division and arguments and, and it uh, all and the, from Yeah, and they all have a fight about unisex toilets. Absolutely, and we've got at the minute a situation where the Tory party is totally in shreds and nobody votes for a party that's tearing itself apart to a situation where the Tories manage to mag- magically unify and the Labour Party are, are scrapping, knocking belts out of each other. It's um, that, that worries me. It's inevitable that the Tories will get their ducks in a row <laughs> and uh, the uh, Labour Party will uh, wrestle each other to the ground so that the Tories can just step nimbly over them and um, acquire another five years in power. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Nothing. <laughs> That's the little pizza, baby. OK. <laughs> Ta-da, 0345. 6060973. Hasta la vista, baby. Correct. Paul tweets that queue at Dover is at least six hours. It's now stretched way back as far as the Minister for Brexit Opportunities uh, Office. <laughs> right back to the Minister for Brexit Opportunities Office. Ain't that right, Smug? You're better informed than I am. I don't know anything. Uh, so here's the story. Headline Fury as Brexit voters get what they want. That's not how it was headlined. Bosses at the port of Dover today blamed French staff for a six-hour wait for passengers to board ferries as they declared a critical incident on what is the busiest summer getaway on the roads in at least eight years. Our insistence to put a hard border between us and France is all the fault of the French. We knew what we were voting for when we elected to leave, or so I have been told at great volume, hundreds of times on this show. And what we want, apparently, is more queuing and less money. Correct. I mean, it makes as much sense as anything else has happened lately. Port of Dover Chief Executive Doug complained that they had been badly let down by insufficiently resourced French border controls in Kent which have been woefully inadequate to meet our predicted demand, said Doug. We gave the EU an enormous headache by being the only country in history to put barriers up between us and our closest trading partners. We gave them a massive amount of work they didn't want to do and a huge expense they didn't want to pay out, and it's all their fault. You see what you've done, French people? You've, you've given us what we voted for and we're very angry about it. <laughs> Natalie Elphick. <laughs> you know Natalie Elphick? You remember Natalie Elphick from the time that she showed up at the P&O strike against being fired and replaced with cheap labour? And she marched to the front where the cameras were and joined in a chant of shame on you, taking a little while to realise the crowd were actually chanting shame on you to her. <laughs> and then she stormed off. Funny stuff. Natalie Elphick, as in (laughs) the Tory MP for Dover. She claimed French border officers didn't show up for work, which is totally French of them. Affirmative. P&O ferries initially said just after 6.30am. There are currently queues in excess of four hours to reach border controls. Two hours later, it posted an update. (laughs) It posted an update saying... It says, please be aware there is heavy traffic at border control in the port of Dover. If you're booked to travel today, please allow at least six hours to clear all security checks. Six hours. How long did it take to go through border checks before we put a border there? I wonder. Um, Can you remember? Was it about two seconds? But, you know, I'm sure that Brexit hasn't screwed up uh, any other way of leaving this island. In other news... Air passengers faced long queues in parts of London, Heathrow, Manchester and Bristol airports this morning after the schools broke up. Is that because the people that used to staff the airports don't work here anymore because we spent years yelling at them to get out of our country? Yes. Really? 
Because that's pretty unpatriotic of them. Don't they love our country? Could that also be the reason that restaurants and hotels can't get the staff that food, actual food, is rotting in the fields because we don't have anyone to pick it? I mean, it could go on, but what's the point? I'm sure all of this is about to be fixed by the ghostly hat stand whose entire purpose in life is to find a Brexit benefit. You're better informed than I am. I don't know anything. He still doesn't know anything. <laughs> what a way to run a country, eh? Dreadful. 0345 6060 Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Uh, let's have Surrey. Michael. Hello, Danny. How are you? Good, thanks. Good stuff. Yeah, oh, you just covered what I wanted to say, basically. Um, it, it's absolutely ridiculous how people are angry um, that France are not doing their job. Um, it, it's like, you know, the, 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 the people in the UK that voted for Brexit want them to pay more money on extra staff um, for, for the option of, of, of leaving uh, the union. It's absolutely ridiculous. I, I don't know how people... Do you know what should have ha- ha- happened, Nick? For every voter that voted to leave, uh, it should have been stamped in their passport. <laughs> and there's, there's two queues, yeah. one for right. wanting to leave and one, in, one who wanted to remain. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what should have happened. Um, because, you know, all of these Brexit people that vote for it will probably be now saying they didn't vote for it. Ah, but they did. They, over yeah. and over and over and over and over again, they told me they knew what they were voting for. So they must have known what they were voting for. <coughs> must have done. Otherwise, they're uh, disseminating misinformation. Liar! They had actually yeah. no idea what they were voting for, but uh, the ad that they saw on Facebook sounded great. We don't want any no. Tur- Turkish people around these parts. For sure, for All sure. Right. Thanks a lot, Michael. 0345 6060 973. Passengers embarking on cross channel sailings from Dover must pass through French border checks before they can board. Didn't used to be like that until we insisted on it. The port said it had increased the number of border control booths by 50%. Now that sounds like a lot. Until he realised that they ended up with 12. So there was eight. See if I get my men. I'm going to do mental arithmetic on the radio. Oh no! If they increase it by fifty percent, there must have been eight, and uh, and now there were twelve. Are you kidding me? <laughs> There's like six miles of queues, and they're saying that if only another four people showed up, then it would have solved the entire problem. Actually, six, because half of them didn't show up. Apparently, half of the French couldn't be bothered. You're like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Why should they? <laughs> Got nothing to do with them. It's us what done it. So only six of the 12 booths were open this morning, apparently. Huge queues built up today in the town of Dover, gridlocking roads, including but not limited to the A20, leading to the Eastern Docks. So it's impossible to imagine that a six mile queue formed for want of six starved staffed booths impossible i don't believe it you mean if six more booths making 12 in total have been fully operational then there would have been no six mile queue nonsense trevor bartlett the uh, leader of dover district council said there was dismay desperation and anger in the town as it was left gridlocked at the start of the summer getaway really dismay desperation and anger And when I read that, I wondered how many of the good people in Dover had voted to leave the European Union, which caused this mess. I mean, I felt the answer would be an overwhelming number because those worst affected by Brexit seem to have been the most keen on the idea. So I looked it up. I did homework. Can you believe that? No. Turns out 62% of the good people of Dover voted leave on a massive turnout of 76%. Definitely the will of the Dover people there, then. And when I was looking that up, an article appeared in the search results from 2019 in The Guardian. And it starts, remember, this is 2019. It starts, as someone who was born and bred in Dover, the threat of a no-deal Brexit has always felt particularly urgent. My hometown would be one of the first to feel the impact, a guinea pig for potential chaos. This was an uh, article from 2019. It says, an analysis commissioned by the Department of Transport itself, suggests that in the event of no deal, lorries and freight vehicles could be delayed for up to two days at Dover, 
with the best case scenario being two to three hours. At the moment, he said it's two to three minutes. Two to three minutes! He said this would, in effect, turn Dover into a car park. The small amount of funding promised by the government will do little to fix the disruption of people's lives. People would struggle to get to work to the town centre, to go about their lives in a normal way. Local businesses would suffer. Residents would have to plan every journey with the potential for it to take ten times longer than usual. Which sounds like lefty, Romaniac, project fear, alarmist nonsense to me. Apart from all of the bits which turned out to be completely correct in every respect. <sighs> 0345 6060 973 text 84850 email nick a at lbc.co.uk if you're on twitter it's at lbc friday saturday sunday night at 10 nick abbott lbc leading britain's conversation lbc with nick abbott this is absolute tosh. David Tex, we have a serial, lying, law-breaking Prime Minister still residing in Number 10. There's no need for political satire anymore. Here we go, 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 OK. No, this entire country's become a joke. Diane says, did Boris pass or fail when put to the test? All we can say is, he did his best. Was that a poem? A poem? Oh, no. <laughs> I hate poems. <laughs> um... Bournemouth. Hello, John. Can you hear me? What? Can you hear me? No. OK. I, I'm going to... I don't want to offend you by this, OK? But uh -oh. the point is this. Uh-oh. I voted for the Brexit. <gasps> and I voted for Conservative Party in 2019. I bet you did. And, and <clears throat> this country, it's the, the le leftist. I always talk saying you can't say this, you can't say that, and thinking like this. Now, mm. I'm not a member of the Conservative Party, and I don't think they'll make Rishi the Prime Minister because a lot of them are racist. <laughs> but I'll tell you this. I have lived in this country a while, and the country is going very badly. Mm -hmm. Brexit was a gamble, okay? It was a bit of a gamble. We, were, we won the Brexit. You didn't win anything. And... Oh, we won the vote. Yeah, but you didn't win anything. Uh, and I'm making preparation now because this country is going so terribly. All of the left is always just talking about... I can't even say the things they talk about because, you know, you can't say this. You go to jail if you criticise Elton John and this and that. <laughs> but I will... Now, listen, I'm, I'll make a serious point. A lot of people in this country feel it is like communist police state. I have three things I want to say. I can't say none of them. Like a and, communist okay, police and, state. And and after voting the Brexit, yeah. I, I'm making preparation now because I used to work in the uh, UAE. And like a lot of my friends, I'll leave also. Because okay. it's very that, it's that, suffocating. That would be great. Leave to UAE where you where you can have real freedom of expression. Bye-bye. <laughs> Is that what that guy just said? Oi. And you voted for Brexit and the Conservative Party, you say. Well, I I bet that you did. I bet that you did. I'd bet a lot of money that you did. I'd bet every stitch of clothing that I'm wearing right now. I'll run out into Leicester Square without clothing if you did not do both of those things. Disgusting. Josie says, will the electronics that run Liz Truss's robot fail if we get another heat wave? Affirmative. Yes, they will. <laughs> uh, Dan says, with Boris's deluded ramblings that he will be PM again in a year, rumoured today, it's becoming ever clearer that he and Corbyn are two sides of the same coin. A Dr. Jeremy and Mr. Hyde in a fridge, if you will. Him and Jeremy Corbyn are two sides of the same coin. <laughs> what are you talking about? Caroline says, at the rate climate change is happening with crazy heat waves, Glasgow will soon have the best temperatures in the UK and everyone will be rushing to move there. Well, all you've got to do is to stay where you are, Caroline. And the weather will pick up, no doubt. Unfortunately, um, that means that everybody's like south of the border is going to be moving north to get away from everybody south of the channel who will be moving north. They'll all be coming here. Martin tweets, you went inside, 
You went inside when it got hot, but did you remove your scarf? Well, for a couple of days there, I wasn't wearing uh, merino wool underclothes, so there's that. But I am today. Blooming freezing outside. Uh, let's have uh, Oldbury, Ranjit. Good evening, Nicky. OK? Yes, I'm great, mate. Yeah, I've just um, been watching Boris Johnson, you know, on his latest um, escapade, yeah. What's he doing now? Well, you know, with this plight that you've been talking oh, about, yeah. you know. I mean, I've seen those, you know, the jets, yeah. Mm. I'm surprised they squeezed him in oh, yeah. for the well, start. Like I said yeah. at the beginning of the show, they had to take out a lot of equipment just to jam him in there. Yeah. yeah. OK, but going back to the leadership thing, yeah, you know when everybody was saying this is a, uh, um, the best out of the bad bunch, yeah? Well, Who the said thing that? Was, people are saying that, yeah? Who? Not you. Lots of people, people like me. No, not me, <laughs> sorry, not me, no, no. No, 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 I'm going, sorry, take that back, yeah? The thing is, the whole thing, the, the Tory party, the Tory machine's totally rotten, yeah? So no matter who you're going to get, you're just going to have a bad bunch anyway. Yes. Okay. And what's worse, you know, I mean, you know, I'm a middle-aged man and I've lived a successful life in this country. And to select a prime minister, just basically now, it's going to come down to his race and they're not going to select him because of that. And that is, it's really, it's really sad. I'm not, right? well, so, I, I don't know that that's true. Um, it's his race. I'm not sure about that. I mean, I, I would imagine that the uh, the Tory party, uh, the Conservative mm. Party members, 76% mm. Leave voters, 39% mm. over 65, 95% white British. I bet they're just as um, uh, as not racist as that profile would, um, as you'd imagine <laughs> from that profile. But I don't well, think they're not going to vote for Fishy because um, of his race. I think they're not going to vote for him because he's he's relatively normal. Well, the thing is, Nick, right? You know, years and years ago, when I used to speak to a lot of white, distinguished gentlemen, right? And the thing they used to say to why, me, not why, in a nasty why way. Were you, why were you doing that? Well, you know, I like to broaden my horizon, see what people think. You were chatting. Inside their head. To white, distinguished gentlemen. Yeah. Where were and you doing that then? Me, you know, in social circles where you can oh. go and meet. No, yeah. So basically, one goes to me. He goes, you know, my grandfather probably used to beat your grandfather up. I says, um, why is that then, Morris? His name was Morris. Yeah. He says, well, it was when he was a soldier in India, and if your grandfather was walking on the pavement, he'd probably beat him with a stick here yeah, and say, get out the way because I'm on the pavement first. So I've got that embedded in my head now that these members of the Tory part, you know, the membership, Would beat, that's beat what you, they're still like. Beat you with a stick well, if you got in their way on a pavement. Yes. Well, that's, yeah. that's probably right. right. Yeah, if they could, thought they right. could get away with it. So they've still got that mentality, right? What's this Indian doing mm. trying to be the Prime Minister? Yeah. And well, if you ever, get in, if I'm, ever I'm, get in my I'm, way on a pavement, Ranjit, I'm thinking of doing the same, but it has nothing to do with your race. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So what I'm saying is, look, I'm not a Tory fan, right? But the thing is, the, 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 uh, past the winning line, it shouldn't come down to race, and unfortunately, it is going to come down to race. Well, I, 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 seri really I to... seriously doubt it. I think that it's uh, it's going to come down to um, who's got the most right wing opinions, and who's going to um, give tax cuts to the rich. And that's it. That's why uh, Liz Truss is uh, ahead, because you think that these th th these mostly men, mostly old men, are going to like voting for a woman more than they going to like voting for a, a man who is not white. I think they'll be holding their nose on, on uh, both accounts. But anyway, thanks a lot, Ranjit. Just stay out of my way. OK. Martin tweets. Oh, no, I've read that. Uh, <laughs> Lucy texts. If Liz Truss becomes prime minister, how many people will feel that she's doing her best? <laughs> Let's ask Zayfod. 
and one more um yeah uh two more than that um uh, 11 11 11 is the right answer 11 people are going to think that liz truss is doing her best i think she's doing her best right now graham says queues for hours at dover people voted for hard borders and they got them enjoy it's what you all wanted <laughs> that's right keep telling me that you knew what you were voting for and every single thing that happens that takes you by surprise is um, the is not what you voted for. It's the French being mean to us. You know, this is an article by Simon Calder, who I've spoken to several times on this show. Uh, he um, writes for The Independent. Travel expert. And he nailed down why it is that all of these uh, things are uh, happening. So I'll, I'll come to that in a minute. Dover and the airports and, you know, all of this stuff. They're trying to blame it on something. Anything else other than Brexit which is going to be ruining this country's prospects from now until the end of time. And they are getting more, ever more frantic in trying to find a way to make it look as though it was a good idea. And failing. Everywhere they go. Every pathetic trade deal they pull. All of these um, op opportunities that they keep telling us about that exist. So many that they can't actually, uh, you know, name them, enumerate them for us. Adam Brait. <laughs> but um, they just ne they're, you can't solve a problem unless you ab admit that you have a problem. It's like having a problem with um, alcohol. Booze. You can't solve the problem if you don't admit you've got a problem. Can you, Carol? No. By the way, I do a, a podcast with Carol McGiffin, which is called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol? Yeah. In which the delightful Carol McGiffin and I try to solve people's problems while laughing like drains. Now, if you have an issue, an, an issue that you want to get solved, then you must simply send it to the following address. Nick and Carol at global.com. N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com. And be prepared for a certain amount of satisfaction. You'll find it on Global Player which is uh, available in your favourite app store. It's got all the stations that we do and a boatload of podcasts as well, in amongst which the three that I do and the one that I'm talking about is the one I do with Carol McGiffin. comes out on Monday. It's about an hour long. It's me and her gassing away trying to solve people's problems. And uh, if you've got an hour and you wish to be amused, you want to just take a little a holiday without having to actually go anywhere, you want to put your mind in neutral and float downstream, then I think you'll love it. Ask for it by name on an internet near you. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. We have never had it so good. You're joking. Yeah, no, sadly not. Grantham. Oh, God, how wearyingly predictable. I mean, he's going to go out in a Margaret Thatcher wig next. It's painful. I don't know what we've done to deserve this, but it must have been pretty bad. We are naughty boys. Simon says, my father, who has dementia in his late 1980s, in, in, 1980s and in his... Uh, my, shall I start that again? Simon says, my father who has dementia and in his late 80s goes to bed with a hot water bottle every night. This week, on the hottest day of the year, I was surprised that he still wanted his usual hot water bottle. When I mentioned that I was almost combusting as it was so hot, he said he hadn't noticed the heat. His doctor also asked him this week if he knew who the Prime Minister was, and he had no idea. No, no wonder he's always smiling. <laughs> no wonder he's always smiling. <laughs> Uh, Martin says, has Liz Truss's voice dropped an octave? Yeah, she's a leader in waiting. That is a disgrace. <laughs> yeah, a little bit lower now. Oh, it's just, <laughs> I don't think I'm stand it anymore. Just when you thought, oh, finally, things might be getting back to normal. It actually gets worse the moment he leaves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Not that he's actually left yet. I'll get into that in a minute. 
Uh, Bristol. Hello, Cookie. Hello, I'm on the air, am I? It sounds like you. Oh, my God. Listen, i got to say thank you for your show. That Liz Truss, she is having a laugh, mate. She is, what is she doing? She is like a tribute act for Mavis Riley. Do you remember Mavis Riley? No. Yeah, Coronation Street. No. That's what she looks like. I mean, she said, oh, I don't really know. Do you remember her? No. Oh, right. Okay, you're too young. You're, you're younger than me. I've that. Yes, no, I, I've just I never mean, watched Coronation Street, that's all. Seems like a it's a massive waste of time to me. What has anything happened on Coronation Street yet, Cookie? <laughs> I'll take that and as you a know, no. When, when Woods first left, honestly, the sleaze, the corruption, the racism, the xenophobia, yeah. the right wing agenda they've been putting through. Oh my God! It, it's like it's just the best prime minister we we can have. She's like a she's a, a, a Thatcher Thatcher tribute act. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I know. But in in closing, calm down, calm down, relax, Cookie. Take a chill pill, man. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I mean, who's she going to put as um, as foreign secretary if she becomes PM? Who is she going to choose as foreign secretary? Is Mister Blobby available? Rachel says, "Who are the Tory party members voting for PM?" Has the party not been infiltrated by the BNP and the UKIP lot? or the genuine Tories resigned? We are in trouble, says Rachel. <coughs> yeah, I think that UKIP have staged a reverse takeover of the Conservative Party. I'm a nutcase. And uh, they've just taken on board everything that they stand for. The arguments that UKIP stands for aren't valid. Heather Tex, Trust uh, gets to be PM. Uh, just watch the lines at Dover stretch back to London as full-scale full -scale, full -scale Brexitus commences. <laughs> Get Bob Marley on the phone. He needs to re record Exodus. He's not picking up? Well, keep trying. Laurie Tex, it was World Emoji Day last Sunday. How did you celebrate? By ignoring it completely. Laurie, thanks for the question. I uh, appreciate it. World Emoji Day. Who says? Says who? Architects, Liz will try and copy Thatcher. She's going to call the wrong shot with Putin. It could go pear-shaped fast. Sorry, shall I try that one again? No. Liz will try and copy Thatcher. She's going to call the wrong shot with Putin. It could go pear-shaped fast. Yeah, I wonder what period of time will pass before we realise that Rutan Tutin has absolutely no intention of letting the grain leave for the, those Ukrainian silos. I mean, you know, how many days before he blows up a ship with lots of grain in it? Just thinking about it. Fresh, delicious coffee. Um, it scrambles my mind. <laughs> All the better to do this show. Chrissy says, how long do you think it will be if Liz Truss becomes PM before Theresa May and the opposition says the nasty party is back in control? Before Theresa May and the opposition... <laughs> aren't they on the same side? I mean, when it comes down to it, they're all on the same side. They're, when it comes down to it, all they're actually interested in is winning the next election. That's it. All of this stuff about, oh, we're going to make your life better and, uh, you know, I'll uh, pay for this and I'll, I'll, we'll pay for that and, uh, you know, there'll be improvements here and there. And, and none of it actually amounts to a hill of beans. The only thing that they're actually laser-focused on is winning the next election, whichever one that may be, at any given time. Ealing, hello, John. Hey. Do you know, one of your last callers made some, he made a statement that uh, we uh, have this propensity to have a problem with Richie Sunak because of his ethnicity. It's got nothing to do with it. The reason we have a problem with him is because he said he's going to fix the economy. He broke it. And the point is, though, he, he made a fortune, uh, you know, uh, short selling over the last two crashes we had. Didn't want to actually deal with any of that stuff. He's a non-dom, right? 
Is he? And it's just like, it's got nothing to do I with the fact that he's I don't an think Asian fellow. He's a non-dom, but I would agree with that. I don't think it's anything to do no, with the no, fact he that he's was, an Asian no, fellow. Honestly, honestly, Nick, he, he, was, a, he uh, was registered to live in America. Honestly, John, if you could find a Tory cabinet member who was not at some point registered non-dom, I'll give you a <laughs> lolly. Yes, but what I would say is this, is that um, it's, this has nothing to do with race or has, it's, it's just... He, we just don't want him. And I'll tell you, Liz Truss is even more scary. Well, yeah, absolutely. We don't get a choice, John, unless you are a Conservative Party member, which I seriously doubt. No, I'm not, I'm not at all, yeah. No, there won't, be, I, there won't I, be a single one of them living in Ealing, that's for certain. Well, I'll tell you what, or in Bath. Bath? <laughs> uh, I bet they do live in Bath. I bet there's loads of them in Bath. Well, there, there are a few of them, but it's generally Liberal Democrat now. Oh, uh, the uh, the wishy washy uh, hippie but, types. But, but that's the other thing about Liz Truss. She was a Liberal Democrat, yeah. And then and then she did this speech about being an anti monarchist, <laughs> and then she said, "The moment I said it, I regretted it." I mean, yeah, sure she did. What, what does that mean? The moment the moment she rewatched it on YouTube decades <laughs> later, she regretted it. Yeah, it's terrifying. Honestly, I tell you what, you know, I just wish. I've got this horrible feeling, as you said a while ago, that like the monster that keeps coming back. Boris is not finished with us. No. Any more He's going to keep coming. Yeah, any more than Donald Trump has uh, finished with uh, America. It's the same I just thing. Wish he, I just wish he'd bugger off and just go. <laughs> Baby Trump isn't going anywhere. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay. All right, thanks a lot, John. 0345 6060 973. Joanne text, did you hear over 2,000 MPs are voting for Boris to be PM again in September? No, I did not hear that, Joanne. Over 2,000, you say? Well, that must be true. <laughs> what? Did you hear over 2,000 MPs are voting for Boris to be PM again in September? OK. Uh, Jack says, if Hansard edited out uh, 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 Mr. Speaker, Johnson's PM requ- uh, replies would be halved in length. Yeah, why don't they have to keep on a go, go on about Mr. Speaker all the time? It's so utterly ludicrous, uh, the, this folder all that they have to go through to run a country. If they did less of that dressing up and playing routine, then we might actually have a chance of getting somewhere. Like when somebody lies their face off in Parliament, you can't say that they're lying. You must say that they're inad- they have inadvertently misled the House. Liar! No, there's nothing inadvertent about it, but you're not allowed to say that. You can lie, but you can't say that someone's a liar, which c- c- tells you everything you need to know about the system in this country. The liar is protected. The whistleblower goes to jail. They get escorted out of the building. Steve tweets, Neither candidate are fit to lead this nation. They are not in touch with the little people. Fishy would probably burst into flames if he ever... (laughs) If he ever went near an Aldi. And Truss will just keep having her private airliners and 60 quid bottles of fizz on us. Aldi. Somebody should try and explain the concept of an Aldi to Fishy Sunak. And what, watch that conf- those confused puppy dog eyes. <laughs> he will have no idea what you're talking about. And which part of Fortnum's is that? Uh, clear the row. Hello, Steve. Oh, Betty. Yes. Would that work? No. Oh, OK. I'll try again another time. Maybe. No, don't. <laughs> uh, that's not the reason I called. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry you, I thought you, you cut s- me off just for no, my... Uh... No, you speak, I'll drink coffee. Go ahead. <laughs> so, um, today, I don't know if you were listening this morning, Wes Streeting was the guest presenter on uh, James O'Brien's show. Oh, yeah. And he started his show off and he said, um, I want to listen to um, everybody's opinions and, you know... Um, he, he, he took a dig at uh, Matt Hancock, who was on the previous day, and apparently he was cutting a lot of callers off. He didn't agree what, with what they were saying. And he said, oh, I won't do that. You know, I want to hear what you've got to say. So yeah. I phoned up, and 
And the nice lady at LBC Towers said, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll put you through. We'll be back, back, back to you in about five or ten minutes or something. Mm-hmm. And the call never came, and I was really disappointed. And Because uh, I wanted to ask him. He was repeating that trope about uh, Corbyn being the worst Labour um, leader, you know, since records began yeah. and, and all that kind of thing. And it really disappoints me when... We've got rid of Corbyn. Corbyn's gone now. But that election in 2019, you know, what's that phrase that they say? If you, if you repeat a lie often enough, it becomes a truth. Yes. And it really annoys me that West Streeton is is being hailed as, like, one of the, the future stars of Labour. And it's completely inaccurate. In 2019, that election, it wasn't a standard general election, was it? It was... The, it was if you ever watch the... Um, when the, the results come in at 10 o'clock and the, uh, what do they call it, the poll, the exit poll, yeah. the, the BBC screen actually said the Brexit election. That's what that was in 2019. Yeah. And the only person who was in charge of Labour's policy on Brexit was Keir Starmer. That's never, ever mentioned. Nobody ever brings that up. It's always about, oh, Corbyn, the worst leader ever. Two years previously, he'd absolutely smashed the Tories um, lead, hadn't it? And, and they had to go capping on to the DUP and they ended up having to do that dodgy deal for one and a half billion quid because Corbyn had come from nowhere. I don't know if you've ever seen it, Nick. There was a documentary that the BBC put out um, and it was following like Stephen Kinnock and a few other Labour MPs. Mm. When the results came in on that evening on the, in 2017, when Corbyn did so ridiculously well, nobody saw it coming. And uh, they, they were absolutely gutted. I mean, Stephen Kinnock was stood there, and you could see on his face when he saw the exit poll, he was just like, oh. Well, this, I this remember, I, I, one, one thing I used to do on this show when uh, Corbyn was the leader of the Labour Party, I, I used to read out his manifesto, but not tell people whose manifesto it was. And pe- people, would be, <laughs> people would be nodding on, thinking, oh, yeah, yeah I quite agree with that. Let's tax the rich a little bit more, and let's renationalise the railways, and... Um, but yeah. and so on and so on, and uh, uh, and they'd be nodding in agreement, uh, absolutely, you know, hugging themselves with delight that that's the way this country was going. And then I'd tell them that it's actually Jeremy Corbyn's manifesto, Boo. and that was a response. <laughs> I know, but yeah, it just it winds me up. I'm, I'm, I want to get behind the the new people that are coming through West Street and. All I ever hear about him is great things, but if he's going to set his stall up telling fibs like that. It, it doesn't bode well for the future, does it? If we've got to reinvent history in order to, you know, to, to put this kind of gap in between um, Corbyn and the Labour Party, I just think it's it's a little bit dodgy. And I, I thought, you know what, they didn't phone me up, but I thought, Nick will have me on tonight. And I'll uh, and when I'm on, I'll ask how uh, Annie in Carnforce did, because I've not heard of her a bit. Has she, um, has she been on recently? Uh, yeah, I believe she was on last weekend. Pretty much, uh, oh, pretty good. sure that I, I talked to her last weekend. Yeah, and if I don't hear Mike from Beverly, I'll be I'll be in touch. So don't worry. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think you just missed him. Thanks a lot, Steve. O three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Yeah, some uh, pretty funny footage of uh, Matt Hancock uh, doing a show here, and the the mask slips just for a brief second there. <laughs> when he motions through the uh, glass for them to turn that caller down. <laughs> he he thought but didn't say. Oh, shut up! 0345 6060 Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. And if you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. This important message just in from Julia. Julia texts, can you tell my uncle that he left his briefcase at my house? This show is brought to you as a public service. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Thank you for holding. Your call is important to us. Your call is important to us. Stanley in Beckenham. Oh, hello, Nick. Oh, hello, Nick. Bless your heart, mate. Stanley. Now, listen, I've got some further inside information. Um, Now, playback Prime Minister's question time, and every time the camera looks at... Liz Truss, when the Prime Minister is speaking. Mm. She looks like one of those people in the audience at Donny Osman concert. Big puppy eyes, and there's Donny looking right at her, <laughs> blowing kisses at her. Now, this tells me, and I have been told by inside information, he is looking to get her to be the next leader of the Tory party. Therefore, she
should be Prime Minister. She will then appoint him to the Cabinet as Foreign Secretary. He's going out to the Ukraine. He's going to challenge Mr Putin to a bare-chested wrestling, arm-wrestling match. And if he wins, he's going to come back and boast about it. And if he loses, he'll say Mr Putin didn't turn up. But the point is this. Just before the next appointed election, this trust will step down. There'll be another new election for a leader of the Conservative Party, and Mr. Boris Astola Vista is back. He will appoint her as the Chancellor of the Exchequer. She would do the tax cuts. If they work, he gets the praise. If they don't, she's on her way. There's another thing that I've heard, and I don't know if it's true or not. She is changing her name by depot to Doris Johnson. That's enough for now. I have to go. Bye. You certainly do, yeah. You had to go quite some time ago. <laughs> I must be ill. <laughs> Let that go way too long. A listener with material. Oh, no. B texts, I hear Liz Truss is going to hit the ground. That's it. <laughs> She's going to hit the ground. Uh, Tom says the late newcomer to the Tory leadership race is the newly elected MP Boris Johnson. Or Joris Bonson, he says. But it's worse than that because Bodge ain't going nowhere. I can't believe it. I can believe it. That's what makes it awful. I'll get to that in a minute. Oh, the stuff that goes on. You know, as a just as a as a passing joke, I wrote on Twitter a while ago that um, we will look back on the Boris Johnson era shortly as the good old days, and I think we already are having uh, sized up the uh, the two inadequates that are vying to be the new dear leader. This is painful. Let's have um, Cornwall. Malcolm. Nick, how you doing, mate? Good, thanks. Nick, um, it's been broken on the news this evening that the queues today in Dover... Now, I would have thought the problem could possibly have been the French um, booth operators who work on our side, allowing us into France. I thought they might have got stuck uh, at the booths in France because the British people weren't allowing them through. <laughs> but it appears that the, the British people in France, they don't stop anybody. Everybody's just a way through. Yeah, but that's, the actual that's reason, right. Yeah. So but same the same with, good, same with goods, out, and, goods and trade and all the rest of it, which is why it's easier to sell into this country. Very, very difficult to sell out. Yeah, but it turns out, Nick, that the French booth operators came in to Britain through the back door in Folkestone and they got stuck in traffic jams from Folkestone to Dover where their booths were. It sounds like you're saying... Booths. But you're actually saying booths. Booths, yeah. Bo the, um, yeah. yeah that's where what... you show your, your passport and yeah. all that. Uh, at the... Yeah. Booths. At the booths. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man! So, you hang couldn't on, make it up, so, could you? Well, hang on a minute, because I didn't see this. I I heard the. Uh, no, it's your fault. No, no, it's your fault. Uh, all, no, no. All, all day long, and so now the 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 truth is the story is that the yeah. reason they didn't show up for work early is because they were stuck in a traffic jam trying to get from, from Folkestone, Folkestone to Dover. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it gets worse. It'd be, it'd be, I mean, that actually sounds true because midway through the, the afternoon, people were phoning um, LBC and saying, well, actually, I've just got through in less than an, an, than an hour. Right. Because it used Minutes. to take seconds. You used to just wave yeah. your passport at them. They weren't interested and they'd uh, send you on your way. Yeah. But apparently Liz is on the case. Oh. And she's... Oh. She's a liaison with her French um, counterpart, and um, it'll be bad tomorrow, but it'll be good on Sunday. A bit like the weather in Glasgow. Right. If you say so, Malcolm, uh, keep your ears uh, peeled, your eyes peeled, and your ears uh, open. Your ears pricked. Thanks a lot, mate. Um, a, a traffic jam from Folkestone to Do You can see Dover from Folkestone. They could have just hopped on a on one of them uh, those little boats. 
<laughs> got pushed back out to sea. Matt emails, now that Bodge will have more time on his hands, do you think that he should play Donny at the game in which you get more points, you get the... the... <laughs> should I try that one again? Do you think he should play Donny at the game in which you get more points if you get the words in the right order? I wouldn't like to call it, but I'm sure that the rules will be strictly followed by both at all times. Oh, do you run? You don't really want to hear that again, do you? No, I wouldn't think so. Not again. Uh, we'll email. Uh, well, maybe. Oh, OK. Later. Will emails, as soon as the Tory leadership result is announced, then Sunak supporters could send a dozen letters of no confidence to Sir Graham Brady. Then the Sunak supporters wait for the first trust blunder and send another 42. So there could be two new leaders of the Tories by the end of the year. <laughs> I love that they cancelled the, uh, the TV debate because it was embarrassing. That's essentially it, isn't it? They looked back at the footage and they thought, oh, this isn't good. This is embarrassing. We look like a bunch of chumps up here. So let's not do this again. You know, in the interest of democracy. So now they're doing it in secret. For crying out loud. To um, a bunch of... A bunch of golf club bores. 95% white. 50, 56% live in London and the South East. 39% over 65, 63% male. Golf club bores. A lot of them. That's who's deciding our uh, next dear leader. It's just amazing what's happening in this country, isn't it? What has uh, happened over the last 12 years, and specifically the last uh, couple of years, to have brought us to this position? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, 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 where do we I can't it? think right off the top of my head. Caroline says, we'd better get a general election or there'll be no more nice cheese in the shop. And if there's no more nice cheese... That is a disgrace. Disgrace. <laughs> if you haven't seen that, that speech of hers, then I don't know where you've been living, but you should get on an internet right now, I mean it, and look at that speech pork futures and British cheese. I mean, honestly, can you think of anybody who is less prime ministerial than, uh, than, um, than Liz? Um. Well, OK. You've got me there. Joe texts, not Joe Tex. I reckon trust in front because party members must have been promised good jobs in the cabinet or cheesy lady is easier to manipulate, says Joe. Yeah, but the party members aren't... They're, they're not going to be the ones with the good jobs. But apart from that, <laughs> I think you've uh, you, you definitely got a, a grasp on what's happening here, Joe. Apart from being completely correct in every respect. Did I say correct? Incorrect. Um, I'm feeling woozy today. I might sound like I'm not quite here. That's because I'm not quite here. 